Welcome to The Advocate, your Sunday reminder that important conversations are among the necessary tools for a sinner society. I will be talking about the strength for adversity. May Nigeria not happen to you. Hussein K. Olarewaju will be talking about the real reasons behind the redesigning of the Naira Notes. Titi Lokwe Bilola will be talking about how to teach your kids about earning, saving and investing. While Tulu Moya will be talking on urgently needed a government for the people we will be back after the break strength for adversity may nigeria not happen to you my name is eni tomoteji birunke and what do i do i build i grow i am light and that's why today in the midst of nigeria's looming adversity i'm advocating for something strength in adversity all around us everything looks bleak very bleak right now no light, no fuel, no cash, no ATM cards. And if your card unfortunately expires, not that it matters though, when you can't even withdraw funds with the card, even if valid. But in the process of preparing for today, I came across a Forbes article. And because I am determined that in adversity, there must be more to do than just lament and cry doom doom all over social media and further blacken the mood and atmosphere. The article mentioned that Resilience is a person's ability to bounce back from adversity and grow from the challenge. And I say, does this apply to Nigerians? That's a good question. As we approach an epic turn in our history, a time of decision making that can affect the next four to eight years of our lives and the lives of generations yet unborn, we as a people have become more discerning, more circumspect, and suddenly, boom, adversity like we have never seen before hits us and what does this have the ability to do and is in fact doing people are losing their equilibrium and suddenly only survival matters let me take us on a short journey down memory lane to talk about a man who has shown me that in spite and despite your best strategy in adversity is strength i am going to talk about a man that i know personally he grew up dirt poor poor as in p-o-o-r poor like on a staple diet of Gary and then Gary again. He would stand on the shorelines of Ikorodu town back in the day and look across the waters and say to himself, there's life and wealth in Iko, Iko referring to Lagos. I must make it to Iko. And indeed, he made it to Iko. And not only did he make it to Iko, he became a lawyer, raised 16 children to university level and beyond, traveled around the world and built a legacy that's still living on even in his death. But remember, all the odds were stacked against him. But he kept one thing going, his mindset of strength in adversity. In September 2015, mental health was included in the UN Sustainable Development Goals. In this historic step, the United Nations acknowledged the burden of disease of mental illness and defined mental health as a priority for global development for the next 15 years. Now, according to the World Health Organization, Health in itself is a state of complete physical, mental, and social well-being, and not merely the absence of disease or infirmity. So today, as I end it on stand on SDG3, good health and well-being, and while I also realize that I do not absolve the government of Nigeria of its responsibilities to its citizens, I advocate that you as a citizen of this country take your life and health into your own hands. And as said by Olu Akamu, President and Co-CEO of Nigeria, there may be situations of adversity pushing at the boundaries of change. And unless you have a good depth of inner strength to draw inspiration from within yourself, you may be unable to overcome the adversity and fulfill your purpose in the time and place. As long as you allow external forces to affect your mental and social well-being, you are unwell. And how can you rationally reason? You will be more susceptible to the lures of enticement. My fellow Nigerians, don't break at this time. Stand strong in adversity. Find positive mental coping mechanisms. This too shall surely pass. May God bless the Federal Republic of Nigeria. Amen. 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 
<laughs> and, <laughs> and <laughs> you left out PVC. You didn't talk about the PVC. I'm, I I, I, I'm <laughs> many, how, how many things can we talk about? Thank you. Because even me, like, <laughs> I will not lie to you. Like, I was tested. Like, by today, at some point, after going into three banks, just trying to renew my ATM card, I was like, you know what? Maybe that strength adversity is a myth. Should I just abandon the whole theory? But I said to myself, no way. No, we're going to come through because I, I really, I mean, I, there was a man in the banking hall. He was losing his, it was really, that guy was going to go mad. Like, he literally, at some point, I just said, you know what, let me leave this banking hall in case they turn it into a crisis right here. And it's just, I mean, I feel for me, it's a bit crazy. But I still believe that, that mental state of being, if we're not careful, we're going to just totally lose it. Why at this time? Why, why at this time is everything totally upside down when we need to make life-changing decisions? You know? I had this, I asked you this question, like, are they trying to test something? I don't know. Are they trying to push us to the limit to see what's going to happen? Because everything that's happening, it's not making any sense. No, it doesn't make sense. It doesn't. And yeah. honestly. I, I think, I mean, so, I mean, there are a lot of gems in your, I mean, in your, um, your advocacy. You know, for instance, you talked about um, resilience. And Nigerian, Nigerians have been said to be one of the most, some of the most resilient people on earth, <laughs> right? So that's the good part. We're very resilient people. You know, like you said, maybe they're trying to push. They've heard this, they've seen this statistics and they say, you know what? <laughs> How resilient can you really be? <laughs> Let's push this thing a bit further. Maybe it's a social experiment. Who knows? This right? <laughs> but, but, it won't have a good <laughs> end. If they don't take time, but, it won't end well for yeah, them. Yeah, but the, the, the challenge is um these things are avoidable there's nothing here i mean like i always say most of nigeria's problems are thinking problems mm -hmm. we're not just thinking there's nothing there's there's no brain surgery or rocket science required in changing the currency nothing nothing there's no. the, the countries that don't produce oil that don't have fuel scarcity mm -hmm. so there's nothing that is happening to us that is that is a that massive you need mind boggling you know you need some some out of space solution for so These are everyday common problems. The problem mm. is just that people that are responsible for solving these problems are not thinking. They're and it's rather thinking. unfortunate. Mm -hmm. Because what happens is, well, that's what happens when people get to positions of leadership or authority without being merited for it. You know, that's why I'm not, I'm not really a big advocate of this thing. They say, oh, you know, this, I forgot what it's called, where you have to come from a certain tribe. Quotas. Quotas. I don't care about that. Just mm -hmm. find people that are, you know, that are competent. That can do this work and let them do it. Who cares about the quota system when exactly. things are not working? You know, if you're about, sorry, like you're saying, if you're about to die mm -hmm. on the Third Milan Bridge mm -hmm. and they brought you a doctor, will your first question be where, where are you from? from? No, because we're, we're at that point where it looks like this this you know construct called Nigeria is, is losing its life. We just need to first get on life support, and it doesn't really matter who gets us there. You know? mm. Well, I mean, I, I really think that at this point in time, I, I do believe that strongly as a people, it has gotten to a point where we're going to have to intentionally find our inner strength somehow. From my own end, I think, uh, just like you said, I want to come in for the inner strength, you know. You see, uh, everybody has said there is nothing really, so yeah, we don't think, we don't, we don't exercise the power we possess. And looking at love that blessed. We know we have issues with the uh, leadership. We have issue of leadership in Nigeria, right? But I give an example. Um, the story of Adidas. Adidas discovered okay, they had a skill that uh, they, they they have inherited from their parents. But during the uh, it was Kuma and Nagasaki war, and a lot of people were displaced. Some soldiers need, uh, you know, their, their shoes, their house, and stuff like that. So you have people who are actually working barefooted. And so let us pick these pieces. These people need this, and they begin to make money out of it. And today, Adidas, from the, the hardship of war, they discover their potential and turn it to an advantage. Mm -hmm. So I believe when we look in inward, we all actually have the potential to turn around um, a lot of things in Nigeria, but we are just lazy to think. One, we are also lazy to read because the narrow design notes of, of, of what are we that we are looking at now. If you look at Buhari's tenor far back uh, 
when he was the military head of state, Idiagon, they did it. So there are, there are things we should at least follow the history, but we are lazy to study the history and we are quick to react instead of think, just like we said. And I think we, we everything is our laziness. If we just bring in that inner self and push a little bit, we'll be better of a country. Thank you, Hussein. Yeah. Um, <laughs> even though, even though yeah. I mean, I, I, I do agree with some points of what you said, but I also think that while it may, you may think that there's some laziness, I also think that those of us, people like you that do know history, what exactly have we actually done in terms of educating a lot of people do not actually, where's the access to the history? We don't have our history written down. We don't have documents, books, authored by Nigerians on what has gone on. Have we even taken any steps to say to those our, our parents or our parents before them that can you allow us to document our history and then be able to circulate it? So maybe laziness may not be, in my opinion, one of the best ways to put that challenge. It may just simply be a function of are we ourselves that actually know not doing enough? Yeah, absolutely agree. And I was going to say, I mean, I, I actually echo your thoughts that, you know, Yes, there's a question of laziness, but beyond that, there's something you rather call for offer. Mm -hmm. I think that most of our problems are self-inflicted. Most of mm -hmm. our wounds are self-inflicted. It's like you're going to war and you're shooting yourself rather than shooting the enemy. Most of the problems we're dealing with today are problems of nepotism, mm -hmm. you know, uh, lack of competence, and just plain foolishness. Exactly. And that's very far from laziness. And I say, I mean, there's nothing you have mentioned here today that is not stuff that even a Gen Z, just give them two or three days to crack this thing. They will give you a solution to it. I mean, it's currency. You know how many Nigerians, you have data. I mean, it's talking about history. Of what use is history that you don't learn from? Exactly. And that's the biggest problem that we have. We don't learn from history. No, we don't. History continues to teach lessons, but we refuse to learn from it. So we'll make the same mistakes again. Okay, well, I believe that um, we have taken away something from this particular session. Right? At the end of the day, there's adversity in Nigeria. We need that strength because we do not want Nigeria to happen to us. And we don't even want the calamity that Titi, Titi has just spoken about and has, you know, said could get us. You're saying K. Olari Waju is next after the break.